Tonight's headlines are brought to you in part by Coldwell Energy and McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thank you for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemus. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Police need your help in locating a missing person. Also tonight, the months-long debate for retiree bonus is now over. Good news for retirees. And lawmakers ask the governor to provide additional assistance for the people. In sports, girls take the soccer game to a whole nother level. Stay with us, we have these stories and more next here on the Channel 2 News. I have a phone. I have no TV. Ooh, TV on phone. I have a tablet. I have no TV. Ooh, TV on tab. I have a TV. I have a stick. Ooh, TV on stick. I want my streaming. I want my TV. Ooh, streaming TV. And there you have it, McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich, you'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba. Half a day to the WAMI and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Wednesday, April 27, 2022. The Sinai Department of Public Safety is asking for your help in locating a local male who has been reported missing. 50-year-old Juan Igasomar was last seen on Sunday, April 24, by the former ITNE building in Chalan Laulau. Family members say they have not seen him for about two weeks now. They know that Igasomar has a disability and frequently walks along Middle Road, Chalan Laulau. Several individuals within the community said he was last seen over the weekend wearing khaki long pants with no shirt on. Igasomar 
is approximately five foot eight and weighs around 200 pounds. Police are actively searching for Igisomar and is seeking the public's help. If you have any information, please call 911. After four months of a tug of war up in the legislature, the retiree bonus bill now sits on the governor's desk. It's a long time coming, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy that um, this is a product that the, both, both the House and the Senate um, can agree upon and, and come to a, a con consensus. The House of Representatives passed this morning the Senate version of a bill that would fund the retirees' $1,000 bonus. Representative Donna Manglonia is the author of the bill, who says the process did take a while, but their intention was to provide transparency and accountability of the money. We thank the retirees for their patience. Uh, I know it's, um, it's been um, mentioned since December, but, you know, if... You know, it's all a matter of um, ensuring that, you know, the, the transparency and accountability is there in ensuring that local funds are, are taken out from the right um, accounts in order to address the retiree bonus. Legislators debated back and forth numerous times on the appropriate funding source that would provide the retiree bonus. The House initially proposed to take funds from the Marianas Visitors Authority, but officials expressed that it would hamper their operations. Senators then took into account the recommendations from Finance Secretary David Atalik to reappropriate lapsed funding under personnel, along with some line item vetoes from the governor. According to Vice Speaker B.J. Atau, there were some concerns with employees who may receive their annual pay raise. Atau says Secretary Atalik was able to confirm that the money for WGIs have already been reserved and the bill would not affect it. This is not going to affect the government employees that are due up for their WGIs. And even in the submission of the budget proposal, which became 22-8, the WGS were being addressed by the ARPA fund, so this is this won't touch the uh, WGS that will be will be or the individuals, government employees that will be receiving their WGS so forward after this bill becomes uh, law. Sixteen members voted this morning for the passage of the bill, with one abstention from Representative Selena Babauta. Babauta disclosed she has a conflict of interest as her husband is a retiree and she would directly benefit from the action. Three members were absent. The bill now goes to Governor Torres. The governor issued a release earlier this afternoon stating that although it is unfortunate that it took several months to make this possible, he is thankful to the House for collaborating with the Senate. He goes on to say, quote, I humbly await to sign this bill into law so that our retirees can finally receive their well-deserved bonus, unquote. Also sitting on the governor's desk is a proposal that will help alleviate the pain at gas pumps. One gallon of gas on Saipan costs $5.97. Rota's gas is $7.44. Tinian prevails the highest price of a gallon of gas, $7.77. Just this morning, the House of Representatives unanimously passed a resolution seeking the governor's approval to provide a $500 gas voucher program. Senator Edith DeLon Guerrero is the author of the gas voucher resolution, who says the Ukraine-Russia tensions has affected gas prices, and it's expected to increase even higher. The resolution is asking Governor Torres and Finance Secretary David Atalik to implement a program that will help residents at the pump. The resolutions were adopted by both bodies of the legislature, and now it sits on the governor's desk. Representative Tina Sablon noted that there is also still a pending piece of legislation sitting with the Senate that will also help residents, providing another $500 local stimulus in the form of cash. I'd like to ask our Senate colleagues to, uh, to consider that resolution and pass that as well. Uh, the administration has 
so far, uh, at least acknowledge that there is a need for a local stimulus. It sounds like they're still leaning in the direction of debit cards, which we know came with all kinds of inconveniences. Sablon's bill is currently with a Senate committee, and once there is a standing report, it will be passed on to the full body for a vote. A local doctor has asked for a jury trial in a complaint filed by the United States, alleging that he violated the Controlled Substances Act. The U.S. says Dr. Tony Stearns, who previously practiced at Marianas Medical Center, prescribed painkillers to patients in violation of the Controlled Substances Act. DEA says they reviewed select patient files of Dr. Stearns from 2015 through 2020 and found violations concerning five patients. Violations include not seeing a patient face-to-face, -face, refilling subscriptions without properly monitoring the patient, and not having the proper training to prescribe controlled drugs for use in maintenance or detoxification treatment. That complaint was answered this week in a filing by local attorney Sean Frink, who represents Dr. Stearns. Stearns says he accepted patients for care who were already addicted to prescription medicine who were largely abandoned by other care providers. Stern says he treated these patients in a manner consistent with good faith clinical care while maintaining awareness to their addiction circumstances. And Stern says he had a legitimate doctor-patient relationship with each of these patients and believes there was a legitimate medical purpose for the prescriptions that were issued and says that all five patients are currently leading much more productive and safer lives as a result of his treatment. In the filing, Stern says physicians, particularly in isolated jurisdictions like Saipan, should not be discouraged from making good faith decisions to take on outcast patients in an effort to treat them, even if they are addicted to narcotics. This is not a criminal case. U.S. is asking for civil penalties. Each violation could be subject to up to $67,000 in fine. There were 357 prescriptions listed in the complaint. Stearns has asked for a jury trial. Government employees are now able to take two hours each week during work to conduct personal health and wellness related activities. Governor Ralph Torres has signed a directive implementing a fit-to-lead health and wellness campaign. Beginning May 2nd, all executive branch employees of the Sinemite government will have a two-hour administrative leave each week to conduct personal health and wellness-related activities. The allowed activities include COVID-19 vaccinations or testing, appointments with healthcare professionals, screening checks, and physical fitness and wellness activities. Proper timekeeping will be enforced and must be in compliance with all seen in my Office of Personnel Management policies and regulations. Each department will also have at least one health coach who will spearhead a fitness and wellness plan that includes short and long-term objectives. An implementation strategy that protects the government's service while also keeping your health in check must be considered. These plans are to be submitted to the governor's office by the end of the week. The governor signed the directive on Tuesday with cabinet members present and local mixed martial arts champion Frank the Crank Camacho joining in virtually. All right, up next, Hoops and Vibes Tournament coming your way. Please stay tuned. I have a phone. I have no TV. TV on phone. Get live TV on your phone or any device with DTV Plus from Docomo Pacific. Watch live channels or stream from your favorite apps on any device, all from your home Wi-Fi. No cable lines, no hassle, more savings. All for only $35 a month with your link bundle. DTV Plus, your cable TV on Wi-Fi. Ooh, TV on phone. My journey began in 2019. I noticed white patch. Now it was stage one cancer. I told my wife that I had cancer. 
I just remember sitting in there with Dr. Moss. First thing that got into my mind was, how am I going to get to my car? And all the emotions were running through my head. And I, I, I broke down. After my second surgery, I was cancer-free for one year and 28 days. During my routine checkup, cancer came back. Same thing, I got my, my surgery. Biopsy results from all that surgery came back negative again. And I've been cancer-free so far, just doing my three months uh, CT scan, blood works. My advice to all is try not to pick up on bad habits. If you feel any type of sores or stuff in your mouth, visit CHC or any dental clinic for your free oral screening. Early detection is the best chance for your successful treatment. Ready to quit tobacco? Call the CNMI Tobacco Quit Line at 670-323-7848. Visit your dental clinic for a free oral health screening. Green sea turtles and hawksbill turtles call the Mariana Islands home. They're an important part of the marine ecosystem. They are under threat and they are protected under CNMI law. Keep plastic out of the ocean. Keep vehicles off the beach. Use the sea turtle stranding hotline if you see poaching activities or if you see a turtle in trouble. Call 287-8537 and save a turtle. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. Precinct 5 representatives will be sponsoring a Hoop and Vibe tournament. They are calling the attention of all young basketball players around the island. Representatives Leila Staffler and Richard Lizama will be hosting a basketball tournament in the month of May. We really want to encourage any interested basketball players from the ages of 14 to 18 or as long as you're still in school. So if you're eight, uh, 19 and but you're still registered in school, we'd love to have you play. Um, it's not just for Kagman, although we are sponsoring it. We are inviting any players across the island uh, to come and join us. The idea came about as they were repainting the basketball courts up in Kagman. We were really uh, inspired when we were painting the basketball courts because last year, uh, the students that came and helped us to to paint the courts uh, one of the things they asked us was you know if we're gonna have a court painted mist can you at least give us a program like you know let us actually play the game and so um, that's what we are here to do. Staffler and Lizama have hosted previous activities in Precinct 5 that focuses on healthy living and activities for residents to do. It's good for the health good for for the children I mean for the the students after school hours that they have some type, some type of organized sports. With this, it's a challenge for each one of them. Maybe perhaps each village in our island will come up with a team and let's have a, a game uh, among themselves, for themselves. And uh, hopefully that this, this is a start. And I hope that there'll be uh, more uh, games on, uh, in the future. The deadline to register will be this Friday. Flyers of the event have been posted around the island with a QR code that will take you to the registration site. But you can also visit bit.ly slash P5 hoops. Volunteers and vendors are also invited to join. We're actually also um, recruiting for any interested uh, people who want to be officials, so like referees or uh, statisticians. We would love to have their participation to help us keep track of all of the awesome data that comes out because we want to uh, give out uh, uh, trophies to the 
highest three, uh, the highest score, the highest uh, point getter, and also the most three point uh, shoot shooter. And of course, there's first, second, third place. Um, but we need we need assistance. So if you are a referee and like to maybe earn a little bit extra on the side, um, please sign up. We are also inviting vendors uh, to come and go to some of the games and sell food. Uh, and so if you are a vendor, a food vendor, we'd love to invite you as well. The Sinemai Republican Party is inviting retirees to their headquarters tonight at the Old Spicy Thai in Garvin. Retirees are being called to join the Republican Party for a meet and greet with gubernatorial bets Ralph Torres and Vinny Sablon. Gil Adda is the chairperson for the committee to elect. Please come and join us at the headquarters of the Republican for all the retires of the Commonwealth of the Northern Marianas. And let's have fun and enjoy and, you know, we'll be all working together as one and let's enjoy. The event is expected to go on until 10 p.m. tonight. The full slate of the Republican senatorial, mayoral and congressional candidates from all precincts is also expected to be present as well. Sinemai Democrats have named their new building as the People's Office, and the community is invited for the official unveiling tomorrow. The Democratic Party of the Northern Mariana Islands will be unveiling their head office, located at the Quartermaster Traffic Light intersection on Middle Road, tomorrow, Thursday, April 28. Party Chair Jonathan Cabrera is inviting the general public to see the new office, learn about the party, volunteer, and even make donations. A roadside wave will begin at 4 p.m. and then followed by an open house at 5.30. The community is encouraged to come meet their party members and elected officials who will be in attendance. Candidate outreach is also currently ongoing. For those interested, you may contact 670-234-5028 or email info to nmidems.org. All right, folks, don't go anywhere because we have sports up next. I have a tablet. I have no TV. Ooh, TV on tab. Get live TV on your tablet or any device with DTV Plus from Docomo Pacific. Watch live channels or stream from your favorite apps on any device, all from your home Wi-Fi. No cable lines, no hassle, more savings. All for only $35 a month with your Link Bundle, DTV Plus. Your cable TV on Wi-Fi. Ooh, TV on tab. Hey, golfers, come north and practice your game at the Marianas Driving Range. New Year's local specials. 10-piece coupon books available for just $60. That's a $10 savings. Want to get really good? Come work on your swing every day for just $99 per month. It's our practice pass, and you're going to love it. Grab your passes and go straight to the range. You can social distance and chip all at the same time, and the views are free. Reserve now at MarianasTrekking.com. You can pay online. Open seven days a week. Tonight's sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live.
Point of Sports fans. For the KSPN Sports Report, the Francisco M. Sablon Middle School and Marianas High School is the PSS Soccer Champions. Francisco Mendola Sablon Middle School wins the PSS Interscholastic Girls Middle School Soccer League Championship against Saipan International School on Saturday morning at the NMI Soccer Training Center in Kobler. FMS is very aggressive from the start and scores their first goal a little after eight minutes in the first half of the game. <laughs> SIS changed their strategy in defense and was very effective, but it was still no match for the aggressive FMS. They remained scoreless throughout the first half. This is the Interscholastic Soccer League Championship match between uh, FMS and uh, SIS Middle Schools. And this is the second half and it's 2-0 with 9 minutes to go in the match. FMS scores their second goal at the beginning of the second half and SIS continues to struggle to stop FMS. Towards the end of the game, FMS scores their last and third goal to seal their win over SIS. The score is 3-0. Rosie Saralu wins the finals most valuable player and the Golden Boot awardee for scoring 12 goals in three matches. It was, it was good. I play club soccer, so. So that gave you an advantage? Yeah. We will, we're really happy, uh, we're also grateful that we had this opportunity to play. It's been a long time because of uh, uh, there was no interscholastic sports for the past two years, I believe. And uh, yeah, we're just really happy to bring home first place for FMS and for the girls to have a great opportunity to play, you know, such a beautiful sport. Well, we're MHS, MHS 1. <laughs> Um, and we're playing against Saipan Southern in the final. The team is comprised of mostly, high, it's all high school students. Um, we have five of the national team players so that makes um, our team a bit stronger. We also have some good players that used to play on the national team. Meanwhile, in the high school division, Mariana's high school outshined Saipan Southern and won the championship. Both teams are in high spirit and is playing very well against each other. In the 15-minute mark, Saipan Southern scores their first goal and takes the lead 1-0. Towards the end of the first half, MHS scores their first goal and ties the game. MHS continues their attacks at the start of the second half that resulted to their second goal and leads the score 2-1. to one. Siphon Southern is trying their best but is no match to the unstoppable MHS Dolphins who scores their third and fourth goals winning the championship. Final score is 4-1. Alyssa Angeles of MHS is the final's most valuable player, while Summer Monahani of Saipan Southern receives the Golden Booth Award for scoring nine goals in five matches. Go-karts, off-roading, and the driving range now open at Marianas Trekking. 
Go-Kart Track will be open Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays with 50% off when you book online at MarianasTrekking.com. Hours, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Use the promo code HAFA50 to get your discount. Off-roading is open too by reservation. Come on a 90-minute trail ride that is perfect for families. Book online at MarianasTrekking.com. Golfers, come practice on the driving range. You can even pay online and we will have the balls waiting for you. Come see us weekends at Marianas Trekking, 323-8735. Hi, I'm Dre, one of the personal trainers here at Gold's Gym, and today we're gonna to show you a Bulgarian split squat, a fantastic lower body exercise that should be a main staple in your training. Now the first thing we want to address is the rear foot placement. Now whether it's toes on or toes off, just find what's comfortable for you. The bigger issue we want to tackle is the height of the box or bench. You see when you set up on a box or a bench that's too high, that inherently puts an aggressive stretch on the front of your hip. Oftentimes that sensation will take away from the working leg, the leg that's on the floor. And when you start to add load in this faulty position, you're bound to run into some problems, particularly if you got some mobility restrictions. So Jamila's gonna set up, she's gonna descend with control, and from there just stand tall. And for the KSPN weather report, mostly sunny with isolated showers, east wind around 18 miles per hour. Tonight, mostly cloudy with isolated showers, east wind 14 to 20 miles per hour, high 87 and low 76. The marine forecast, small craft advisory in effect until 10 p.m. tonight. Frequent gusts to 30 knots near Tinian and Saipan and to 25 knots near Rhoda are probable through late this evening. Combined seas of 6 to 9 feet will persist through Thursday. Dangerous rip currents along east facing reefs through 10 p.m. tonight. The sunrise will be at 5.56 a.m., high tide at 5.40 a.m., low tide at 11.49 p.m., and the sunset will be at 6.33 p.m. All right, folks, there you have it. That is your midweek edition of the new sports and weather. We thank you so much for watching. We hope you have a good night and we'll see you back here on Friday.